Hello, and welcome to another episode of Sharing Wisdom. I'm your host, Angie Wisdom. And today we are talking sales. We're talking increasing your numbers and knocking it out of the park, but not in your traditional sales way. I don't have any quick tips and tricks for you. I'm bringing on Elise Archer, who is a master at making these huge breakthroughs in sales, but it's all about the internal work. It's about the mindset. It's about the stories. So she's got a tremendous amount of value to share. She works for a lot of big Fortune 500 companies with their sales programs and helps individuals break through their first six figures. So we're going to get all the good information from her. Elise, welcome. The audience is listening, ears wide open to figure out like, talk to me about this journey of you realizing you didn't want to be kind of living the life that you were and performing this Mm -hmm. way and making that shift. Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. And I love this concept and and my hope and my goal, Angie, is that today, wherever somebody is on their journey and in their sales journey as well, that um, they realize through what we talk about that they can set and achieve much bigger goals with greater ease as well. And I know that's Mm. something that you teach your clients and are a master in as well. So um, I'll share just a, a quick background. So my journey was one that probably a lot of people can relate to where Um, I spent a good portion of the early part of my career really um, seeking to create success in the way I thought I was supposed to. So I graduated college, went into sales because I I was actually going to do journalism and this will date me a bit, but I remember sitting in my news ed class and I was going to be a newspaper reporter Mm -hmm. (laughs) and the professor shared with us how much we could expect to make if we were working for the paper. <laughs> and even at, I know it was like 19 years old. I remember thinking, mm, mama likes nice shoes. That's not going to work. So yeah, it's not going to work done, next. <laughs> not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd done sales jobs for really a lot of my teens. And then, um, I, I worked my way uh, or I worked sales jobs throughout school as well. So I graduated college, went into corporate media sales, And I found myself in my mid twenties, having worked my way up the ranks, um, top of the sales leaderboard, you know, on the outside, Mm. looking like I had it all together. So nice house, nice car, like I said, top of the leaderboard. And what I wasn't sharing with anyone though, was how much I was struggling inside. So struggling Mm. with anxiety, about selling, about money, even though I was making plenty, I was still in anxiety around it. Um, I was struggling with panic attacks and eating disorder. So during this time in my life, it was so painful to be alone with my thoughts that Mm -hmm. I was looking for anything to fill that time in that space while I was on these long drives between visiting clients. And that's how I uncovered and discovered podcasting. So kind of a happy accident there, but I started listening to personal development podcasts. And even though I was raised in a very, um, intellectually smart, ambitious household. A lot of the focus was on achievement and academics more so than personal growth. And so it was Mm -hmm. my first, um, it it was really the first introduction I had to any content that shared that I could actually transform any part of my life that wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And so I, I can share more about this whenever it's appropriate, but I ended up making some really hard choices and really hard decisions to change a lot of what was going on in my life at that time. But it was fueled by that discovery into podcasting and personal growth. So I'll let you take it from there with whatever best serves your people. Yeah. It was so much in there. First of all, when you said, I don't know if you've ever been like this or if anyone listening has ever like had this not wanting to be alone with their thoughts. I mean, girl, I think everybody has been at that place. (laughs) I mean, it's why they stay busy, right? It's Mm. how many times do people are like, you know, I got to be doing something. I got to be doing something, even if it's on social media or something to occupy the mind, like, because people aren't necessarily comfortable just sitting in silence with the thoughts that come up. So everybody, I think that resonates for everybody, but you also, you know, I want to talk about what was driving some of those underlying problems where you said, you know, the anxiety, the panic attacks, Mm. the eating disorders. I want to ask you about that, but also to highlight, isn't it so interesting? You talk about like, it almost, we have this grooming from society of like, what is achievement? 
you know, Mm. the house, the six figures, like we just almost get programmed to go, this is what we're supposed to accomplish. This is what we're supposed to like the markers we're supposed to hit. And when I do, then I will be. Yes. And it's Mm -hmm. such a false narrative. Yes. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. And it's one thing, if I can just add in there that we, we teach our clients and that I've really learned from making a lot of mistakes in this area myself is this whole seeking validation from external Mm -hmm. sources. And I think this starts, it starts so early. It's programming, it's conditioning. It happens for all of us. Right. But somewhere along the way, we really, I think where, where we can find ourselves in that scenario where I was, where we've kind of built up this false life is where at some point along the way, we stop trusting ourselves. We stop trusting our instincts, our desires. Um, mm-hmm. For us as women, that can happen a lot of different ways, whether there's sexual trauma, we disconnect from our bodies. Um, there's just, you know, good girl, people pleasing. This happens regardless of your gender. Yeah. But we start looking to others to tell us we're good enough. We're powerful enough. We're smart enough. It's time. We're worthy. And this is something I see happening in sales too, that people do. Mm -hmm. And it's something I did for a long time is if I can just hit this number, then I'll be, then I'll feel good enough. Then I'll feel worthy. And I, I existed for over a decade with that mentality first in sales. And then as an entrepreneur, even after I left that corporate job, Mm -hmm. I went on to start doing sales coaching. And no matter what I did, no matter how hard I worked, I would never make more than a a certain amount every year. So for me, it was low six figures. And I always thought, gosh, if I could just make more, then I'd be good enough. Then I'd be worthy. Then I'd be happy. And it wasn't until I dropped that and started, started learning this concept that I now teach called selling from wholeness, which is about Mm. reconnecting with the, the fullness of who you are. And I know you teach a lot about values, which I love because when we, when we learn to tap in and look inside and be true to ourselves and realize that you are good enough as you are, it has nothing to do with how much money you make. You are worthy enough as you are. It doesn't matter if this client buys from you or not. We approach everything in our lives, including sales. If we're in sales or an entrepreneur from this energy of wholeness and from Mm. that place the conversations are different. The energy is different. We're not trying to convince or hard close or do anything like that. And and so by default, you actually end up selling more. Um, And I had some pretty incredible quantum leaps in my own journey with this and in quantum leaping my income pretty significantly from this energy. Um, But it's, it's, it's this concept again of selling from wholeness versus selling from lack or scarcity. So please, I, I could go on and on about this. Please interject and, and take that. I mean, I you. love, I and love all critical. of it. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, you're talking about, I often refer to kind of being like um, detached from the outcome, mm. you know, when you don't have that scarcity, when you're not so attached to like getting that sale, getting the number, hitting that thing, you just show up differently. And, and I often talk about like working with yourself versus against yourself. And, and it's kind of like that wholeness concept when you are working from this place of wholeness that I want you to dive into a little bit more about the characteristics of that. You know, you just there's a flow. There's just yes. an ease. There's authenticity that makes these things happen. Yes. And I think the biggest hurdle for people is like it's hard to kind of let go of the attachment, you know, the mm. need and stuff. Right. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a prize. Yeah. I don't know about you for me, even today I've, I've done work on this for gosh, five, six years, like intensive work on this now and, and daily still, I notice attachment. I mean, that's perhaps the human sure. journey and the human mm-hmm. <laughs> challenge is Natural. getting attached to things outside of us. And then realizing all along what you were looking for is actually inside of you, which is a big, probably right. a bigger macro conversation about life. Right. But, um, but it applies in sales and it applies in everything for sure. It does. Yeah. Um, I want to take you back to the beginning where you were talking about some of these symptoms that you were having, because I think people can also relate to that. And I want to talk about what was causing that for you? Like Mm. I said, you mentioned the panic attacks, the anxiety. If you could pinpoint some of the things that were going on that were creating those symptoms, Mm. what would you say those were? Sure. Sure. 
And the challenge with that, at least for me, was when I was in it, it just felt natural. It didn't feel good, mm. but it felt, I just, I, I, I was, I had such consistent underlying anxiety and I'd had it for so long that I didn't even realize that there could be another way. So I just want to acknowledge yeah. that first for anyone who may be relating to that, where these, these emotions, these chemical reactions are strong, right? It's cortisol in mm -hmm. our bodies. We're fight or flight and our bodies literally get addicted to these chemicals and these emotional signatures as well, because they just feel like us after a while. Yeah. What I now understand, and this comes from some of it's my spiritual journey. Some of it is mm -hmm. neuroscience. Um, and just really seeking, um, I, when I started seeking a different way of living and achievement and success, understanding that when we're experiencing those emotions, those negative emotions, what it is, is that we're, we're thinking a thought in that moment. That's not actually our truth or in alignment with, with the, the, with the truth of who we are. It's not, it's not an empowering belief. It's a limiting belief, right? Is the phrase you'll hear a lot of people say, right? So what's beautiful about the mind body connection. And this is where probably for you too, a lot of the clients I work with, they've disconnected from their bodies for so long and they don't think that their emotions matter. They don't think that they're giving them any information, but what's beautiful when you do this work to start to reconnect and start to um, examine what your emotions are trying to tell you is that when we're feeling a negative emotion, it's an instant indicator that in that moment we're, we're thinking a limiting belief. We're thinking something that's mm -hmm. not actually true. And so again, these things are programmed in, especially first seven years of our lives when we're in Delta and then theta brain waves, right? We're basically mm -hmm. walking around under hypnosis. We're picking up all of these programs from our parents, from society. Money doesn't grow on trees. Money is the root of all evil. Little girls should be seen and not heard. Big boys don't cry. And we don't have yeah. yet an analytical faculty to determine, is this actually true for me? So later on, so these things get cemented in our brain as programs. They run the show. I mean, you no doubt teach this. A lot yeah. of your audience probably gets this 95 to 98% of our results are based on our subconscious programming and conditioning, not our conscious actions. So later right. on, we go on and we want to live productive, happy, successful, wealthy, abundant lives as professionals, as entrepreneurs, as adults. And let's say that you have a sales goal or a revenue target that you want to hit and consciously you get that that's a good thing for you to do. Yet mm -hmm. subconsciously you have a program that rich people are greedy or you saw your parents fight over money and you took that in as a little child to mean if I have money, I can't have love and there's going to be arguing and fighting in my home. You're going to have this conflict. You're going to have this tension. You're going to have anxiety, fear, um, doubt, worry, and you're not going to know why consciously why it's showing mm -hmm. up. But so right. I, I started, as I started studying this and learning this, I started examining my thoughts to see, well, what am I actually thinking in this moment? And I think one of the most empowering moments of our lives is when we realize just because you think a thought, it doesn't mean it's true. So I started mm -hmm. looking at every thought that I was thinking that was triggering those emotions in my body and started writing them down. And, re and looking at it and saying, is that true? Or is that going to support me in getting to where I want to go? Is that a universal truth? Does everyone have to play by this rule that mm -hmm, seven figures mm -hmm. is hard to make or rich people are great? And I was like, no. Um, so I, I started learning processes to rewire and to, re, um, to, yeah, to rewire my belief systems to be in accordance with the goals I wanted to hit. But again, it, it certainly Amazing. wasn't an overnight thing. Um, but when sure. I did and when I, I learned it, I was able to literally go from having been stuck at the same level of, of income and sales for over a decade to in six weeks, I turned my annual income into my monthly income because I finally debunked these limiting beliefs and got consciously aware of, of them and, and started creating a different belief system. So it's it's critically imperative that we're aware of these and we tune into our emotions to use them as guidance for whether we're on the right track or yeah. the wrong track.
Uh, that whole that whole piece right there, if I could clip something from this podcast for people to focus in on. And and I got to tell you, we're kind of going mindset now. And I was really like sales driven. But this is so important. I firmly believe that the number one place you have to focus to change things in your life is your mind. Like mm. it is all mindset. And yes. what you said, you know, just because you think a thought doesn't mean that it's true. Like I need everyone to hear that. Rewind this little clip right here and understand that because it really is our ability to change those thoughts that changes things. Yes. And for people that are used to listening to me, you all, this is this is mindset. This is self-awareness. You know what Elise just said about going, I started to examine my thoughts. That is the definition of self-awareness right there. Yeah. It, it is like once you do that, you have such an ability to make change in your life. Mm. Do you, are you a believer, like help elaborate on this? Because sometimes, you know, people need to hear it from more than one person, mm. but my whole process is like, you know, you get these thoughts. I love what you're saying. Write them down, examine them, decide whether or not they're your truth, what you want to do with them. Mm -hmm. But what is your process then for going, what thought do I want to believe? Mm. Yes, absolutely. This is so good. So, so we teach something and I, and I appreciate too, that you said, you know, I, I was thinking we're just going to have sales talk, <laughs> which we could absolutely, yeah. <laughs> we could absolutely go there. So I know people want that too. And here's what I'll, what I'll say yes. with that, Angie, what I want to caveat with, with that is I spent over a decade trying to break past a certain income threshold and I was doing all the right sales strategy things. I was saying the mm -hmm. right words. I was using the yep. right scripts. I was using the tie down clothes, the choice of two positives. I knew how to answer objections. And yet, no matter how hard I worked or doing all the right things, I never broke past. For me, it was again, about $10,000 a month, which is, which is great. Again, I just, I use numbers for context here. And for a lot of yes. people, that's where they want to go first when, when they get into sales or as an entrepreneur. But for me, I, I had a grander vision for my life. It wasn't when I finally quantum leaped and got unstuck from that level and started having $100,000 months like that. It was not a strategy. It wasn't a sales strategy. It was doing mm -hmm. this work we're talking about right here. Yeah. And so, so when I, it happened so fast and the transformation happened so fast and the process of sales became so much easier that I went to dissect it and figure out what happened and what is this process so other people can apply it, whether they're new in sales, new as entrepreneurs, whether they're seasoned and they want to break past a plateau. And I developed this concept we call the four quadrants of quantum sales growth. Mm -hmm. and, and it's these four M's. So the first is mind over matter. The second is money. The third is masculine and feminine energy. And then the fourth mm -hmm. is the method the actual strategy. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at these, and it's a little easier sometimes to explain with a diagram, but um, when, when we talk about the importance of them and we teach these to our clients, those first three, mind over matter, which is what we're talking about here, mm -hmm. money, your relationship with money, your financial set point, how you relate to it, and then the masculine and feminine energy, those we call the big three because those are the ones that account for 95 to 98% of your results. The tactical mm -hmm. method is three to five percent so coming back to your question which was how what do you teach people to do once they identify the limiting beliefs one of the first things that i would do and one of the first things that we have our clients do is it, and it's it's super sexy we do it in a spreadsheet so someone listening can do oh this yeah on a spreadsheet or they could do this on a note on their phone is to get conscious of how they are currently showing up and Dr. Joe Dispenza teaches this. He says, your personality creates your personal reality. So what is your mm. personality? It's your thoughts, it's your feelings, and it's your behaviors. So those three things, thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, those are the things that are creating your current sales results. So if you want to get a different result, well, guess what? We got to look at what would the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors be of someone who's at that level? So mm -hmm. we write down and we get familiar with what are the old thoughts that are, that, that are limiting beliefs? What are the feelings that maybe just feel like me that I've been living out day after day, maybe for decades, 
but for the version of me at my goal, for someone who's achieved this goal, are they feeling anxiety, fear, overwhelm, or are they feeling yeah. joy, gratitude, abundance, right? And then what are the actions that I'm taking that I know are self-limiting? And that's the old personality. We want to write that down. And then we look at on the other side of the spreadsheet, what are the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors of someone who's at the goal? And let me just take my best mm -hmm. guess. And this is part of the value of coaching, right? Working with a mentor yeah. like you to help to have, because a lot of times we're so in it, we can't see it. So what would the thoughts be of someone who's at my goal? What would the feelings and emotions be? And mm -hmm. what would the actions be? How would I be showing up? And I think this is where people get, they hear us talk about something like this and they may think, oh, like that's manifestation. That's woo. Like that's like looking at your goal on a vision board and not doing anything. This is where people get manifesting wrong because we don't get what we want in life. We get what we are. We're manifesting mm -hmm. results all the time. So if you want right. a different result, your results will never supersede your identity. You got to right. create a different identity. So you start practicing being that person every mm -hmm. day. And it's uncomfortable and it's stretchy and it's going to feel unnatural and you're not going to like it. <laughs> There's going to be a period where yeah. you don't like it because the old personality, literally it, it's the, the ego views it as the death of the old self and it doesn't know what's on the other sure. side of this. So anyway, I, I could go on and on about this, but I'll pause because you, you may have questions, but, but this is the process. And this is where we start with that, that first quadrant, the mind over matter, which is literally about reconditioning your mind, your brain, to, to step into the version of you who has the new result, so that you can start experiencing that. Yeah. I'm so in love with this. When I just thought the last segment was good. This one is like, is so good. It's like school for everyone who's listening right now. And so true, you know, like I constantly see people who want to, I say they want to shortcut the process and mm. really go to the tactical things, right? Like what's the script, what all the things you said, like the traditional sales coaching, because in some ways it's easier, right? It's tactical. You memorize mm. your message, you know, your strategy, but the real work is within the personal side. And I always yeah. say your professional success is capped by your personal development. Like mm. it's not going to go higher your professional success than you are personally developed. So I love this concept of really looking at, you know, who you're showing up as now and who you're going to be. So I want to get into that because I think this is where people get a little lost depending on your personality. This is not about being someone else other than you, right? You are still you. So we're not causing you to lose your authenticity, right. but it's about almost like modeled behavior. You've seen somebody else succeed like this. You mm. know what it looks like. And I'm not saying copy it, but you have to have that vision of how you are at this next level. So speak a little bit to that from this place of like authenticity and kind of retaining who you are, but being this new version. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. You know, everything, and I'll, I'll tie this in everything in yeah. my life changed. Angie, when I, I turned 35 and I, I made a different wish on that birthday that I had made previous birthdays, previous birthdays. I had said things like, oh, I want to make more money. I want to, um, be more successful. It was, I was always very like career driven, ambitious, all of that. And when I was in that mode, that's when I was still stuck. When I turned 35, I decided to do something different. And I said, I want to experience the fullness of who I am. I'd been reading Bronnie Ware's top five regrets of the dying while I was nursing mm -hmm. my, uh, my four month old, our first son. Uh -huh. late at night. And there was some, one of the regrets was I wish I had lived a life that was true to me rather than doing yeah. what everyone else told me I should do. And I realized how much everything in my life was driven by other people rather than the authenticity of who I was and who I was meant to be because I'd forgotten it. Mm -hmm. I really wasn't even sure who that person was. And so that making that wish, I want to experience the fullness of who I am. I started really questioning who I was, which <laughs> these are the big life questions yeah. that sometimes we never ask, or we only ask at right. the end of our lives. And I found there were so many parts of me that I loved that I disconnected from. 
whether it was um, wanting to be involved in philanthropic work or singing. Like I loved singing growing up. And then I just stopped when I was in college. Um, and I, I was like, man, I haven't sang in a long time. I miss that. Or, um, creativity, you know, I, I, I started telling myself these limiting beliefs for a while, but like I, for a long time, actually, that I just wasn't creative. And I was, you know, I was, I was so in masculine energy of just produce and follow the script mm -hmm. and, and follow the process. And I'd really lost track of that part of me, but I started really asking like, who did I want to be when I was growing up and who was I? And so those elements, if someone is, is like wanting to evolve, but not wanting to lose touch with the authentic part of them or wanting to get in deeper touch with the authentic part of them, there's this beautiful exercise and it's not my original. I think it's Kathy Heller who did it originally, but your five dream lives and you go and you journal on if I could start over and if I could live any five dream lives, what would they be? No consequences, mm. no limitations. What would they be? And a lot of times you may, you may pull things from childhood that you wanted to do, but you decided it wasn't practical or you were dreaming too big. Um, it may be things that you look at other people doing now. Like someone sees you hosting a podcast or sees you coaching. They're like, man, that would be amazing. But that's for her, not for me. Right. We, we tell ourselves these things. Um, but that's what you want to pay attention to. Those are your clues. Those are your triggers to the, who's the authentic version of you. And that, that is your core truth. That's who you are. That's how you're going to thrive and be most successful. The way that I look at it at is you came into the world this way. And then over the course of time, that, that core truth of who you are got kind of, it got dampened. It got contained. It got pushed sure. down by these programs, by these limiting beliefs, by this conditioning that there's only certain ways to be successful or, um, you'll never amount to much or this or that all the limiting beliefs, right? So again, look at the thoughts yeah. that you're thinking when you're feeling a negative emotion, that's going to tell you the negative programs that are running. That's not the authentic you. Those are the mm -hmm. things that we want to release and strip away. And so it's this conscious process of stepping into greater expansion, greater truth, greater authenticity while simultaneously releasing and letting go of the old programs, the old conditioning that was never you in the first place, right? The false self. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It's, it, you will become more authentic as you do this process, not less. Does that make sense how I explained it? Oh, absolutely. You know, and it, I had this thought as you were explaining that, it, you know, like you said, it's kind of like the death of, you know, the old self, right? And so the ego kind of gets frazzled about that. But there's almost this bit of like, you're afraid to lose your authenticity, but you truly aren't really even authentic at this yes. point, right? Because yes. we, we lose that. And so that's, I think, important for people to understand is what this, this fear of you going, well, I'm going to be this isn't losing your authenticity. It's almost a process of finding your authenticity, yes. which is such a key, right? To unlock yes. your power, especially in sales. Um, you started talking about these things that you love and, you know, it's like values every, it's screaming to me, right? This yeah. is a lot of what I talk about. <laughs> yeah. And I know people listening are going, oh my gosh, your values, like you really do, they get crowded out mm -hmm. over time because the job, the kids, the spouse, whatever it may be, like life gets busy. And so those things that you used to love to do, maybe be creative or those lost dreams, they just get pushed to the side. And that's part of what kind of dilutes that authenticity, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but this conversation, I, I said a minute ago, you know, I thought we were going to talk all sales and then I'm sitting here going, this is like yes. this, you all who are listening and talking about turning your yearly income into your monthly income. This is what it takes. Yes. This mm -hmm. is the sales school. Yes. It's not the script. It's not all the, you know, technical pieces of sales. So gosh, I just, I love, love, love this conversation, especially mm -hmm. because, and let's get into this. Things were different in 2023. Like oh, the yeah. last half of the year, it's been harder for salespeople. When mm -hmm. we have shifts in economy, when people get tighter with money, mm -hmm. it becomes harder for people to do sales. So shine a little light on that for me. As you're working yeah. with clients, um, you work for some 
I've done speaking and, and training in major, major corporations, Salesforce and, and big Fortune 500 names. Like, what is the messaging you're giving people during these times of, yeah, what's the right word we want to use? Maybe, you know, a tighter economy. Mm, yeah, for sure. So I, I personally, I focus on making my own economy. So it's not that I'm not conscious mm. to what's going on. Sure. However, I believe we create our own economy. And so again, it's all about what are you going to pay attention to and what are you going to buy into and what mm -hmm. are you going to give your attention? Because as ev everyone listening knows, there are more millionaires made in down economies than in up economies. So it's, it's what yeah. are you going to focus on? Right. So I don't, I, I really don't let that impact me at all. And I stay very, very focused mm -hmm. on my goals. Now, a few things I would say are with any goal, regardless of the economy, you get to be attached to the what, but not the how. The what, but not the, I would say not the who or the how. So yeah, you get okay. to be, you get to be connected to your goal, whatever your goal is, whatever mm -hmm. your sales target, whatever your quota is. Again, I would from that place of wholeness, right? So check in. Mm -hmm. and, and this is, I know sometimes you've, if you're listening and you're working for a sales organization, your quota may be given to you. If you're an entrepreneur, you're probably setting your own targets or goals. So check in. Am I doing this because I think I'll be good enough when I hit that number? Or is this mm -hmm. goal coming from a place of wholeness, worthiness, validation already? And let me see how close I can get to this. This would be fun. This would be expansive. This would be stretchy, right? We want to yeah. be expanding and stretching and growing all the time. Um, but from that place, we, we, we get to say yes to the goal. We get to say yes to the vision. However, we do not get to dictate or determine who needs to be our customer or how it needs to happen. So mm. and everyone gets this, right? It's just how conscious are we to it? In times of transition, when either the faucet turns off or what you did for a long time no longer works, it's always an invitation to up level. It's always an invitation to think bigger. It's always an invitation to think differently. So for example, after we record this podcast, I'm going to go do a training on AI for sales mastery to some insurance agents. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I had some resistance around that when this was like, when this started becoming a really big thing earlier this year. And I was like, mm, oh, I don't want to learn yeah. that. I like what I'm doing. <laughs> but if you study the science of getting rich at all, which is a book all about wealth mindset and money, it talks about following the tide of opportunity and how mm. those who create true wealth and true success go with the flow and with the current versus putting their head in the sand or being in denial. So I would just look at what are we doing that's outdated? What are we doing that's outmoded? That's outmoded? What are we holding on to or attached to that just doesn't work anymore? I'm, I'm consulting with a financial services company right now that's brilliant in how they're doing their sales process because they've built out this 18, 20 step touch point campaign to connect with new leads over the course of a month, mm. but they're not doing it the way everyone else is. This is what I love. Like most, most people in sales, most People in their role would just copy and paste a script or they would dial and smile and just say the same thing over and over again, even though right. we know people aren't going to be picking up the phone the way they would have five, 10 years ago, if they even did then. Sure. Um, so they're teaching their people to do video messages. They're teaching their people to do social media yeah. outreach, to do voice notes on LinkedIn. So it's, it's how can we be creative? What do we need to change? What do we need to adjust with that mindset again of I'm going to use this for me versus let someone else's determination of what I can or can't do right now based on the economy impact me, right? I set my mm -hmm. goals. I commit to my goals. I'm responsible for that. So it's this, it's this internal locus of control, right? Where you get to, yeah. you create and determine your results and your reality. So such a good answer. Amazing. Um, it, mm. it really is. It's almost like this, the word that comes to me is you even said responsibility where mm. I think oftentimes people fall into that victim mentality around something that is happening to them, whether it's yeah. the interest rates, the economy, the, this, that, that is impacting their ability to sell. So mm -hmm. it's really the shift of taking responsibility for what yeah. you want. 
Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Absolutely. You you said something that I loved that I got to go back to. You talk about kind of the why I almost took it as like the why behind this goal, which I really Mm -hmm. want people to hear. And I want you to elaborate a little bit more on like, am I setting this goal? Because then I will be more valuable, more worthy, deserving. Like there's almost kind of the negative side of it. Or am I setting this goal because it's fun? It is expansive. So talk to me a little bit more about that because every person in sales, typically, you know, you look at your year before and it's like, okay, well, I'm going to do this. You know, the next year there's this this natural, like just jack up the numbers a little bit for my next goal. So Mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that process of deciding what is fun and stretching. And how do you know if it is this kind of, well, then I will be this if I succeed. I love, so Bob Proctor said something that really struck me in terms of goal setting. And this is going to be a rough paraphrase, Mm -hmm. but we talk about how most people will evaluate a goal and they'll say, am I worthy of this? Right. We'll set a goal and we won't feel worthy of it. Well, what he said that I, that so transformed how I think about this is any goal that you set, you're trading your life for it. Mm. Whatever the goal is, you're trade, you're literally trading your life for it right now. You and I having this conversation, we both have separate goals. Us having this conversation is clearly it's in alignment with your goals and it's in alignment with mine because we said yes to it. Right. And we are trading our life for this right now. Is it worth it? Is Mm -hmm. it worth it? So if we, and to your point, I love your point about most people will say, Oh, I'm going to do 5% more than I did last year. I'm going to do, you know, I'll do about the same or a little bit more, which is how most people set goals. Um, If we're setting goals that way, there's no growth in that. You already know how to do it. So, Mm -hmm. so when you set a goal, it's not about the achievement of the goal. It's about who are you going to become in the process? Because you Mm -hmm. and I both know as goal oriented, ambitious leaders and entrepreneurs, when we hit the goal, what do we do? We celebrate for a few minutes and then we're like, what's next? (laughs) And there's nothing wrong with that (laughs) because we're wired to expand. It's how we're wired. But if we think that the whole point of the goal is just to hit it, then we're actually missing the whole point. There's a, there's a Mm -hmm. a goal flowing through me right now. And I've learned the more that I just surrender in life and let things flow, actually the bigger and better life becomes. And there's a goal that it's just, it, it shows up and it shows up and it shows up and it's flowing through and it, it terrifies me. And it pushes all of the buttons of, of my old limiting beliefs. Mm. Terrifies is maybe a strong word. It makes me very uncomfortable. (laughs) Yeah, because the current version of now I want to know. Everyone wants to know what is this goal flowing through you? (laughs) Yeah, and it just it like I know I know we're gonna do it. I know it's gonna happen, and yeah, I get to become a very up leveled person and a much better Mm -hmm. leader, and a and a woman who has a lot more capacity in the achievement of this goal for our company. So it stretches and pushes the heck out of my boundaries right now. But yeah. I really trust that when we're open and when we're open to be of service to that, the goals mm-hmm. that, that we are attracted to and drawn to. And again, it's like, it's flowing through. I think the difference is I used to set goals and it was grabby and it was like, Oh, if I could hit that, then I'll be good enough. Yeah. When we do the work we've talked about today, and do this work to get back into alignment with our values and with the truth of who we are. To me, it's more of an experience of goals flowing through us. Of Mm -hmm. what, what am I drawn to that somebody else has done? What would, what feels so expansive and stretchy, but is like, Ooh, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe I could, I know that's exciting. Um, It's about something much bigger than just us. And we have to remember that and almost like get out of the way Um, but remember that the, the real reward, it's not just about the achievement of the goal. It really is. Who are you going to become in the process, which comes back to Mm -hmm. what we talked about at the beginning, the identity work, come back to that because you becoming a person to achieve a bigger sales goal, you're going to have to become someone who feels more worthy, feels more abundant, is more confident, is bolder, takes bigger risks shows up for himself or herself more. 
isn't that a great prize in and of mm. itself? Wasn't that worth Absolutely. it? Right? Yeah. So I can, all I can literally feel your words as you're saying this. And so I know the people listening, you know, you get those kind of butterflies in your belly or that warm, you know, feeling running through your veins. And it's like, yeah, this is the way it should feel. This is fun. And I think it's important to note that when you're setting goals like this, it's not necessarily more work, right? Mm. The more work comes from these linear goals of like, okay, I'm going to do 10% more revenue. That is more of just what you did. Yes. You have either got to have more people or you're going to have to work more hours versus this expansiveness that you're talking about. You know, it's just, it's growing as you're going to mm. do different work. Yes. You know, it's not yes. just more hours. So I think that's important to know. And it's something that you can kind of check with yourself. Is this just going to put me on the phone for so many more hours, more hours during the week? If so, that can be, you know, maybe a, a red flag there. Oh, this yeah. conversation, I mean, I know most people are going to be listening, but if you look at, I mean, my notepad is just filled with timestamps of this podcast because all the gems you brought us, I mean, I know this sounds crazy. At least if I would have known our conversation was going to be like this, we would have done it a long, long time ago. Um, you are absolutely amazing. I love everything that you've shared today. And I just know how powerful this is going to be for so many people. If we had more time, we would keep talking, but I know you have a hard stop here. So I, I want to kind of talk a little bit about how people can find you, um, what you're up to right now, because I know you have a book coming out, Permission to be Powerful, coming out in January. And if it's anything like this, and, and I know it's a compilation of people's stories, yeah. talk a little bit about that because I'm all in. I want to read it. Oh, thank you so much. This, this has been so yeah. fun. I love our conversation. I love your energy. I so appreciate this. Um, yes. So thank you for the opportunity to share as well. Um, my website's elisearcher.com. So you can go there for all the things and <laughs> to connect and get yeah. in touch. And then, yes. So the book is Permission to Be Powerful. It's a really cool, I'll just share super briefly, um, a very cool mm -hmm. thing happened with one of our mastermind members who came into the mastermind and was in a consulting job, but was feeling, feeling stuck and, and ready for more, but not sure what that was. Well, in about six months of, um, of being in the mastermind, she actually ended up getting super confident, super empowered and went out and started her own publishing company. I was like, you're amazing. Oh, wow. she, she connected with the fullness of who she was. And she was like, I mm -hmm. love writing. I love publishing. I'm going to launch a publishing company. She launched the company. And I said, we need to publish our first book with her as a, as an organization. So over this past right. year, I've been working with, um, a number of my clients, many of our mastermind members, some other private clients as well to come together and write this collective anthology that we are calling permission to be powerful. And it's these mm. moments that women are sharing of when they finally gave themselves permission to be as powerful as they knew they really were inside and what happened. Mm. And there's how to's and there's examples and there's all sorts of good takeaways from it. And so it's, again, what's beautiful about it is it's, it's not just my story. It's a story of lots of different women from different, different life experiences and backgrounds. So Yes, that is. It's available for pre-order now on Amazon as we're recording mm, this. Okay. But January 17th is our official pub date. Um, and it's available mm. again, Amazon or all, all bookstores as well. So thank you for the opportunity. To so that. exciting. Very excited. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on that. And I think it's important too, is as us as coaches, you know, and, and somewhat viewed as experts in our areas, people don't always, they hear what we say, but they don't always feel like it's as achievable. You know, it's kind of like, mm. oh, well, easy for you. You know, this is what you do type of thing. So I love that when you can share other people's stories of going, no, like it's, it's achievable for everybody, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to read that. That is absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. Um, again, thank you for being on here. I feel like we didn't get into all all the stories that I wanted to, and there's so much more, but as I'm wrapping up here, I'm like, at least you just make sales feel good. I mean, like I haven't had a great sales conversation like this in so long. So that's going to be the theme of this podcast sales that feel really good, like expansive and growing. So I can't wait to share it out there. Um, you know, for anyone listening, if you like this, comment, share it with people. Everyone is in a sales industry of some sort. 
give this to them because the work truly is coming back to you and working on yourself to increase your sales. So Elise, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Angie. This has been great. <laughs> 